Hello there and welcome to Strategic Command World War II War in Europe As we do something different today It's kind of a similar video To the one I've made about conquering Warsaw in the first turn as Germany in a Strategic Command uh, World at War But this time I'm going to do a D-Day How to... How do I think is the best what I think is the best way to do as allies in the on the very first turn of the D-Day. So, and I want to do that video because I'm going to do another D-Day series this year uh, as Axis against AI this time on expert difficulty level. I'm halfway through that series. Mm, and I hope that I will be able to finish it before it begins on the 6th of June But we'll see about that And I want to do this little video So I won't focus too much about the Soviet Union Well, actually, what do you, I'm just going to go with general strategy What you want to do is just keep the pressure up as much as possible Try to insert some units, of course, destroy them on the initial turn, cut off from the railways, etc. etc. Keep pushing, keep the strong units in one place to keep breaking through the defensive positions that they can, uh, the German players might make. I haven't played it against the human opponent uh, on the allied side of things. But against the AI, it will just deliver units in here. They will, it will keep it so you can pretty much destroy every single unit immediately, and they will have like only units, uh, stray units in the key cities located till the battle. So there is not that much of a thing to do with human opponents. It probably will be a bit tougher, but it's still doable, to say the, to say the least. It's more than doable. <laughs> Let's be honest. And I'm not going to focus on Italy too much. But I've lifted fog of war because, as you know, the units locations are predetermined. So you can very easily decide by just lifting fog of war before you start the scenario to decide what you want to do, what you want to attack, what you want to bombard, etc. etc. So you you need to learn know what you want to achieve on your first turn, and you can, for example, go like for bombardment. Just uh, use your fighters to destroy the fighters in Paris. Bombard Paris, land some paratroopers. I believe the American one is in range to land here and enter Paris. Yeah. So you might try to do that if that's your choice of action. But you must remember that after you liberate Paris once and it will fall again the German side of things you won't be able to liberate France again because it's a bit gamey when it comes to national morale of France and I think for that reason it's not available you can only liberate major country once in the game so, if you want to have France in this game, make sure that if you conquer Paris, you hold it. But anyway, you, as I was saying before, you can use... Uh, li by lifting fog, fog of war, you can determine what units you might want to bombard, if you want to bombard them. That might actually be not that, that bad of an idea as it looks on the screen. And that means what units are quite weak, as you can see in zero entrenchment on some of guys, as well as on the coast. One entrenchment here, but the entrenchment in Calais. So that's for you to that's your call to make. But I'm going to show you what I think is the best course of action here. So you never want to move your uh, landing crafts, amphibious vessels 
in a range of turrets, so if you want to go for Lehat, just attack them from this side. Or can just attack them from D6, especially the Havre, because you can attack the Havre from D6. And you probably don't want to waste your bombers on attacking guys, and that's the other thing. So, you know what? First thing, of course, the only thing I'm going to do in Italy is to set my HQs to auto assist mode because you are not attached and you are actually. Uh, you are pesky business. Quite important. You are attaching to all the air power scenes, so that's nice. And the same thing here. Because we have two American HQs, I believe all of their units are actually attached. Yeah, but it is not the case with the great British units, as you can see. Because air power is not attached, and some units like you or you for no apparent reason are also attached while air power is not so you have to do that first and now I think that the key objective in this scenario is to prevent reinforcements from coming to the west being operated from the west and I'm speaking about it from the perspective of playing against human opponent. So what we want to do here, because, well, the Germans ta have taken Vichy France, they have railways leading to France from the south. So with this strategic bomber, you want to make sure that both those railways are down and out of action. So we want to use one attack against Monaco, Let's bring it that, down to one. You need to bring railways down to three at least to prevent them from being used next step and the one in Grenoble as well another one so they are out of commission the units cannot be operated down from the south now because the uh, sources of supply well on the railways are destroyed so they cannot they cannot be used they can operate only up to Turing, Genoa and Aosta. And in the west, in France, we have two key cities that we have to take care of. Which is Dijon and Amiens. That's what I, at least, that's my assessment of the situation here. Because then that leaves us with Paris as the last city. So I think this railway is a little bit convoluted because it's, it leads to actually three cities potential locations which is already a lot so that's not that's that, that that's not i don't think that's the best target for you to bombard and of course that's just making things worse by a hell of a lot more so let's use our attacks here against actually first we want to know about the fighter in Paris because we lifted Folk of War. So we want to intercept his holiness. We know about tank here and another tank here. So he's taken care of his interception is taken care of Let's take care of another interception. Oh, I forgot about you. Okay. So that that's the hex we want to attack. Because we have to... Yeah, actually drew the interception. So that was a mistake on my side. And they've taken a lot of damage. You can try to bombard it if you want. Maybe even take Paris. But we've got some issues to deal with. Yeah, first, strategic bombardment of Amiens. We need to use one bomber here to bring it to one. Dijon. Yeah, it's like that. And you have to decide with the remaining one. Are you going for Paris with your bombers? Because if yes, and you want to land there, then probably 
probably you don't want to bombard Paris, but if you do not want to go for it, then I suggest that you bombard it once and probably Ren. As Dijon is under the strength of 5, as you can see. So, I'm still thinking whether I will go for Paris. I don't think so. Let's bombard it. Actually, uh, no. Bombard it by 2. That's actually bad. Should be at least 3. Yeah. And it's now at strength of 6. So, another attack. Should bring it down the desired value. Less than ideal. Let's put it that way. Know about tank here, and we know that there is a tank here. So, what do we want to do with your bombers now? Do you want to help out against the coastal locations? At waste, using them on Garrison is not the greatest idea ever, but I would assume. But tactical bombers, one medium bomber. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. One tactical, two, four bombers. Four, no, five. Okay. So I would suggest that maybe going for the strongest unit that can do the most damage is the way to go. Because you have to also decide how many objectives you have want to take with your um, uh, assets, uh, amphibious assets. I would suggest that you do not disperse your locations too far away. But keep your forced focus in one direction. So, let you know what? I think we are going to take Le Havre and Cherbourg only. So let's go, let's, where are my Bradleys here? Thanks. We want to land HQ's last. Probably in Cherbourg area. Mm -hmm. So let's just do something like that. Let's see what are our odds against Le Havre are. Do we go with you first? No. 0 to 3 and Khan, as you can see, is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. First army. Let's do that. Let's try to take Sherbrooke from the get-go. Mm -hmm. You can bombard some of these guys that are not on the in the cities, because that's also potentially nice. Mm -hmm. One attack here. Paradly, let's move away. Three points, of course, two because it's me. There's tanks. Okay, you redeemed yourself. And do we decide to use a bomber here? Probably not. Let's use one of them. First, five core, second army. First army. Let's land it out here. Kind the lines. Yeah. Take you out. So we can use some other attacks on Khan instead. Now core is not that great when after landing, so I will use it to take Sherbu. Move a hex away. Nice. And we can land HQ now. Behind from the portugal. Okay, we've got other attacks here as well. Are ready to, to, to deploy now. Are in range. Okay. 
So you will have you. Let's go for the left. Up. With four, four. Okay. So we would take it with core probably. Yeah. And we can move him still and attack him from behind. Oh, that went well, well. Okay, now we have Khan to deal with. And we have just a number of strikes that might be necessary to achieve something. So he's in a semi fortified position. We might use some bombers, who knows. We have tanks and strong army and HQ. And let's move them see out. See what's go what's going on. Alright. First tanks, very can tanks that is. Might deploy to take Khan. Where will I go with you? I wonder. That's fine. First tanks. You deploy, move. Attack. Another tank. Well, no, yeah. Canadian tank. That's actually completely fine. Because we will attack you from here. Okay. We have army that I would like to deploy in here. So we might use one bomber attack or one of my. Airborne as well to achieve a little bit of success. Them say would probably, I would love to probably deploy him here. Mm -hmm. Maybe actually landing here was the best position, but they, what can they really do? They have to move, it doesn't really matter to us, right? You can also land one of you there. And let's let's actually what do I want to do? Have you we are in range of time that I would like to take care of them. Bradley will land behind the lines. Let's do that. And because of that it will automatically attach to those guys. Them say probably behind the line after we take care of him. <laughs> and that's the issue, so I will go with one bomber here. Help me out. Yeah. And I will land Dempsey. And actually probably take Khan with him. I will land you in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we've got a ton of bombers left, so let's start with medium one. I've used uh, my medium bomber, well, I wanted to use tactical. And we can destroy some quality units with bombers instead. One point. Okay, with the British bombers now. Three points, and let's actually do something like that. You can land it here. Nice, can taken. Let's move in because we know that tank is here. We've got another paratrooper. How are you doing, sir? One to one. Not exactly the odds I wanted to see. But we got something else prepared, right? One more, yeah. 
So we can go for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just lock one time. No. Ah. Let's make sure that it dies. And bye bye. Or not, because I am unlucky as always. So I will waste you again to finish you off. Thank you. For once. And now one of the threads is gone. Just like that. Otherwise I would have landed him here, which should have happened, and moved my guy in can to be protected. Now he's kind of in danger from this position, so probably that's not the best idea ever. But let's, we can do something like that. And those ports, you can use some of these guys, you don't need to long range them immediately, you can use them because there is lack of the air power in the area. You can actually just transport some of these guys the ports to deploy there. Tanks here. Let's send the British tanks port as well. And you can send others. Or you can manipulate manipulate the port as well. And what I mean by that is transporting a ton of guys near port. That is not yet full up to strength. And after you deploy this guy, you move battleship port. Let's let's present you with that. Let's say that is our situation next step during next step. We transport some guys, we leave HQs because they are needed for air power. Let's transport some more. You can move your ship like that. Let's assume you are not in port. Someone landed there. You move your ship here. You swap and you can deploy those guys in ports as well. Because they haven't technically moved. So it, because it's swap action and you can deploy them. Then move the ship. Do the same with another ship deploy many of them in a single turn. That's a bit gamey and probably abusing stuff a little bit, but you don't necessarily need to do that. You can deploy, of course, those guys in long-range transports, but of course you have to consider that some of these guys are not really, really upgraded, so doing that might be something you want to do first before you deploy them in long-range transports. Now, you have some air power ready in here, like tactical bombers, so we want them to operate as well, to be operate, to operate them to the scene. Now we have battleships and other ships as well, we have carriers, I probably should have first went with a carrier here and try to attack, uh, finish off the tank there, but we can still do some cheeky little stuff like bombard garrison here, Maybe it gets lucky. Some ships can destroy the morale of units. So you can do something like that as well. You don't want to get too close to that scale. At least you don't want to stay too close to that thing. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. They cannot operate units up to Paris. They cannot operate them here, because they have no uh, railways left. And actually, did we have? No. So they can operate them to here, but it will not save their forces around, the, around here. And from this position forward, they pretty much are, the player is pretty much forced to move something else to Paris if they want to operate units, if they want to uh, Defend it, not operate units automatically. About. And they do not have that many 
options available left. They can attack with him, but then they do not have him to actually defend Paris. That's something we need to consider as well. Or you, we could have bombed Paris, landed there, and just strategically bombard some locations like that. But then you have to deal with the potential consequences of that. They can uh, punish you for that and take it back. So that's your call to make. That's pretty much it. So one tank destroyed. They, uh, the Axis unable to operate units to France. Only on the outskirts of here, which will not affect the combat in a couple of turns or endanger your landing locations as well. So, and from the position of power, you can start pushing towards Paris. You can take ports like the Brittany, which means that actually they have much longer to go from those hexes to actually counterattack. But you are further away from Paris and you want to take Paris and secure it as soon as you can safely do that to provide better supply to your guys. Because until Paris is liberated, your supply sources will be capped at 5 points of strength. And after this it is taken, they will be capped, of course, according to uh, their maximum strength, cities and po ports to 10, and small cities uh, and towns to 8, and cities to 10. So, yeah. That's what I would uh, do at least. So, thank you for watching. Hope that will be useful to you in some form or another. And I will see you. In this scenario, on the Axis side, against AI, on expert difficulty level, on the 6th of June 2021. So thank you once more for watching, and I will see you next time.